hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now again, we're talking about Mestastic, but more specifically, the sensors and modules that can be attached to your Mestastic flashed LoRa device. Now you may notice some nodes you receive contain weather information, such as barometric pressure, temperature, and humidity. Some models already include these sensors from the factory, like the Lily Go Supreme I featured in my last Mestastic video. However, most modules do not have these sensors as standard, but there is a solution if you would like to add weather telemetry to your node. Mestastic's firmware is coded to look for supported sensors on the i2 Square bus at Power Up. And one of these supported devices is the BME280. The BME280 is available for most places like Amazon, eBay, or any of those Chinese online outlets. And they're pretty cheap, less than $10. They only require four wires connecting to your node's GPIO pins, or specifically two GPIO pins and two power pins. Now for this example, I'll use a popular Heltec V3. And as you can see from this slide, the four wires consist of ground, which connects to the ground on the Heltec board's lower left pin one. When looking at the Heltec board from this angle, we then have a V in from the sensor, which goes to the 3V3 pin on the Heltec, which is the third pin up from the bottom. Now you can use the five volt pin, but that only works when a USB cable is plugged in. So if you intend to run off battery, then use the 3V3 pin. SCL and SDA are the I2 square bus wires, which connects to GPO 41 and 42. Specifically, SCL goes to GPO 42 and SDA goes to GPIO 41. Now counting from the bottom left up, GPIO 42 is connection seven up from the bottom, and GPIO 41 is eight counting up from the bottom left. The BME 280 will provide barometric pressure, humidity, and temperature. As you can see here, I'm using a breadboard and jumper wires to connect the sensor to the Heltec V3, and this is just for testing purposes. If you're going to install this sensor in a box with your node, then you would most likely want to make a secure hard connection, i.e. soldering those wires directly from the node to the sensor. Now, once the sensor has been wired in, it's now time to apply power to the node. Always make sure you have the antenna plugged in before connecting the power, otherwise you could potentially damage that LoRa transceiver. We now need to enable the telemetry feature within Mistastic application, so head to settings and select telemetry. You can leave the update interval to default for now, but change the enable button to on under the sensor options section. You can also set the telemetry data to show on the screen of your node by turning it on here. Once these have been set, save the settings, which will then update the node. Though your node will most likely reboot. Just wait a couple of seconds for the node to restart and it should now detect that sensor. If it does, then the telemetry will now show on the screen like this. The telemetry data is also within the Mestastic app. Simply navigate to your list of nodes and tap on your node and you will see the environment metric log. Well, this is on iOS. On Android, it's slightly different and the information is shown on the list of nodes. I'll tap this and you'll now see a history of reported telemetry. Over time, that graph will start to plot, so perfect if you need to monitor a particular location for its telemetry. Now, this telemetry data is shared over the mesh, so other users will also see it when they look at your node. Now, another cool module that you can use is the motion detection module. Hooking up a motion sensor is fairly easy. Now, this one that I have only has three connections. There's five volts ground and then a logic output, which goes high or low, depending on whether motion was detected or not. Simply connect the output pin to one of the GPIO pins on the board and then head to the app to configure it. Now, before heading to the app settings, let me just explain that I have an LED in circuit here just so that you can see the detection. When the LED goes off means the motion has been detected. So this sensor outputs a low trigger meaning when motion is detected, the output pin goes low and then high when there's no motion, hence why the LED lights up when there's no motion. So enable the sensor and make sure that it's selected. 
give it a name, and then set the GPIO pin that you connected the sensor to. That's the output pin from the sensor. You'll need to find a free GPIO pin on your board and then just make a note of the number. You can get the schematic for the Heltec V3 or any of the node devices on the internet from the manufacturer. Now, some sensors may output a detection signal high or low. So using the detection trigger high setting will allow you to choose the correct setting. Then on another device, enable the detection sensor, but change it to client. You will then start to receive motion messages on the primary channel. Now in my testing, I was using the iOS app. And if I did not enable the detection sensor on the client, then I wasn't able to see any motion messages. However, on Android, all messages appeared even with the module turned off. So just be careful not to spam your local mesh if the default primary channel is being used. Now, I hope that kind of makes sense. It does in my head. But if you've got any questions, then just leave them down in the comments below. On the sensor list that I showed at the start of the video, you would have noticed a couple of other sensors, namely the INA260 and the INA219 sensors, which measure current and voltage. Now, these are quite popular to use in the charging circuit, especially if you're using a solar panel. You can use these to monitor the power output from the solar panel live and provide that information across the mesh. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one of these to hand, but I may cover that in another video. It does connect via I2 squared, so it's pretty simple to connect up. The PMS A0031 sensor listed at the bottom there, that's an air quality sensor, which again, I don't have at the moment, but you'd be pleased to know that these also operate on I2 square, meaning you just wire in the power and the SCA and SDL wires for it to work. Now bear in mind though, these sensors are not cheap. You're looking at around $40 for one of these. Anyway, guys, I hope that provided some food for thought. So now it's time for you guys to go and experiment and continue your learning. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.